goal of this lecture is to talk about the electro, electrical conduction system of the heart. And in short, that is how the heart becomes excited, becomes activated, is stimulated to contract. So we've talked about skeletal muscle previously, and I'm going to review that very briefly, but that's going to require, that is to say, skeletal muscle requires nervous stimuli to activate or excite those muscle fibers to initiate contraction. So with muscles, muscles are both excitable cells, as we see in this image right here. That's not necessarily a muscle fiber or muscle cell but it's showing that that cell is excited or depolarized. So for a muscle fiber, muscle fibers are both excitable and able to contract. That's the mechanical events. Contraction and, relaxa contraction and relaxation is a mechanical activity, whereas the depolarization and repolarization is the electrical activity or the excitation of that muscle fiber. The same applies for myocardial cells, cells of the heart, but it happens a little bit differently because as we outlined in a previous lecture, the heart has two different types of cells, the myocardial contractile cells, which are the workhorses of the heart, causing the heart to pump blood or be ejected or for blood to be ejected from the ventricles. And we also have myocardial autorhythmic cells and these autorhythmic cells are really going to be the basis for this lecture. Okay, so brief review of skeletal muscle. What we see right here is a skeletal muscle fiber. Don't worry about the details on this. But this fiber is in a depolarized or excited state. We can see that because we have positive on the outside, positive on the inside. It is depolarized. It is excited. And that's going to ultimately result in muscle contraction. But for the muscle fiber, for skeletal muscle fiber, fiber to become excited, it first needs to be stimulated by a neuron. And that's what we see up in the upper right here in yellow. That neuron itself becomes excited, releases its neurotransmitter, in this case acetylcholine, binds to the receptors on the, at the junctional folds of the motor end plate, and that skeletal muscle fiber depolarizes or becomes excited. That neuron is always, always, always required for contraction of a muscle, of a skeletal muscle fiber or skeletal muscle cell. And really the quick take home message of this is that with myocardial autorhythmic cells of the heart, that neuron is not required. The myocardial autorhythmic cells can fire spontaneously in the absence of any nervous stimuli. And I'm going to say from the outset, I'm not suggesting that's always happening. That is to say that it's always happening in the absence of nervous stimuli because nervous stimuli can adjust or modify the heart rate, but myocardial autorhythmic cells are fully capable of depolarizing and repolarizing and depolarizing and repolarizing independent of the nervous system. Okay, so before we move forward on this, I just want to look at some really amazing numbers, or at least amazing to me. The heart beats 4,800 times per hour, 100,000 beats per day. And 4,800 times per hour would be the same thing as 4,800 4, beats per hour, 100,000 beats per day, 35 million beats per year, and 2.5 billion beats in a lifetime. And to me, those numbers are just crazy to think about. But your heart is constantly, constantly pumping. Those ventricles are constantly pumping blood to the lungs and the systemic circulation, the right ventricle and left ventricle respectively. So your heart is constantly working. And the basis of that are these myocardial autorhythmic cells that we're gonna talk about briefly. So I just wanna outline that the heart, once again, 
has myocardial contractile cells, which are the ones that are contracting and causing the heart to beat or causing blood to be ejected out of the ventricles. The basis of this lecture, once again, is really going to be on myocardial autorhythmic cells. But I just want to highlight with these contractile cells that are constantly working, they have a super high concentration of glycogen and a large number of mitochondria. Mitochondria is the organelle within cells that allows for the creation of ATP. To be clear, we don't need mitochondria to create ATP, but the most efficient way for cells to create ATP is via the organelle known as the mitochondria. And because the heart is constantly pumping throughout our whole lifetime and never stopping, theoretically never stopping, or hopefully it's never stopping, we're going to need ATP constantly to keep that heart pumping. And if you remember the equation to make ATP, it is glucose plus oxygen makes ATP. Certainly it makes CO2, water, and heat. But glucose plus oxygen gives us ATP. So we need a constant supply of glucose. And glycogen is the storage form of glucose. So we break down glycogen and we have a bunch of glucose. So the fact that myocardial contractile cells have a very high concentration of glycogen and a great majority of the mass of these cells are mitochondria, that should tell us that these cells are constantly working and pumping blood. And that is all initiated by myocardial autorhythmic cells. Brief review of excitation, what we see here is a basic action, but action potential, which would be characteristic of a neuron or of a skeletal muscle fiber. In pink, the horizontal line right down here is representing the resting membrane potential. Light blue right here, we have the depolarization event. Then in orange here, we have repolarization back to the resting state. So this is a, what an action potential would look like in a skeletal muscle fiber. So just imagine the muscle fibers in your bicep. If your arm is just relaxed, not doing anything, the great majority, if not all those muscle fibers in your biceps brachii muscle are going to be in the resting state. You pick up that barbell or you pick up that cup of coffee, whatever it is, some of those muscle fibers are going to be activated and they're going to contract. But before they contract, they must become excited. They must depolarize because that depolarization event is going to allow for the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, as we talked about when we covered skeletal muscle. Whether it's smooth muscle, skeletal muscle, or cardiac muscle requires excitation to initiate the contraction. This is what the excitation or the action potential looks like for a skeletal muscle fiber. But this image right here shows what the electrical activity looks like for myocardial autorhythmic cells. So please don't get this image confused with myocardial contractile cells. The electrical activity for myocardial contractile cells looks a lot different than this. And it certainly looks different than it does for skeletal muscle fibers as well. But there's one really, really, really important aspect of this image that we don't see in that previous image. And that is it does not have a resting state. There is no resting membrane potential in myocardial autorhythmic cells. I will repeat that because it's so important. There is no resting membrane potential for myocardial autorhythmic cells. So myocardial autorhythmic cells are depolarizing, as you see right here, and repolarizing. Then they will depolarize again and repolarize again. And they will depolarize again and repolarize again. That is going to happen every minute, every day, every week, constantly, throughout your whole life. Hopefully, these myocardial autorhythmic cells are never, ever, ever going to cease 
having a depolarization and repolarization event because they are designed not to stop. They are designed not to rest. And they can depolarize and repolarize in the absence of any nervous stimuli. Once again, I am not suggesting that they never have nervous stimuli. Parasympathetic activity and sympathetic activity, which are components of the autonomic nervous system, certainly can modify the rate. So for example, if myocardial autorhythmic cells are depolarizing 60 times per minute, which would be a fairly normal heart rate, parasympathetic, parasympathetic activity can come in and slow down that rate, say to 40 times per minute. Or sympathetic activity can come in, stimulate these myocardial autorhythmic cells to speed up. So the modification or modulation of the myocardial autorhythmic cells is dictated by the autonomic nervous system, parasympathetic and sympathetic activity, respectively. But in the absence of any autonomic innervation of myocardial autorhythmic cells, they are still depolarizing and repolarizing at a rate of roughly, let's say, 80 to 100 times per minute. I realize that is contrary to what a lot of books say, but I'm going to suggest it's that. And another thing I want to be clear about, I keep going back and forth between myocardial contractile cells and myocardial autorhythmic cells. The myocardial contractile cells are doing just as their name implies, that is contracting, creating force to eject blood. But those myocardial contractile cells depend upon the autorhythmic cells to tell them when to contract. Because the autorhythmic cells will transfer their electrical activity to the contractile cells, and that electrical activity will initiate the mechanical event known as contraction. So let's take a look at the heart and where these myocardial autorhythmic cells are located. So I'm going to identify some regions of clusters of myocardial autorhythmic cells, and then I will go back and talk more in detail about their role. This right here is representing the sinoatrial node, otherwise known as the SA node, or the pacemaker of the heart. This right here is representing the atrioventricular node, and that's at the base of the right atrium. To be clear, the sinoatrial node or the SA node is at the roof of the right atrium. This right here is the atrioventricular bundle, also known as the bundle of his, leaving the AV bundle, the atrioventricular bundle, we have the right and left bundle branches. And down, starting at the apex of the heart or the inferior aspect of the heart, moving up the ventricles are cells known as Purkinje fibers. And these are all collections of specialized myocardial autorhythmic cells. So as the name implies, the SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. That is going to set the rhythm of the heart. The autorhythmic cells of the SA node are going to depolarize and repolarize. And the rate they depolarize and repolarize is going to be our heart rate because they are transferring that electrical activity to the MCCs, to the myocardial contractile cells. That electrical activity is spread across the myocardium of the atria, so throughout the right atrium and the left atrium right over here. And it also spreads to the AV node, the atrioventricular node. The atrioventricular node will then transfer that electrical activity to the AV bundle. And I don't have an arrow here, but we'll put one in right here. And then that'll go down the right and left bundle branches and then to, to the Purkinje fibers. One thing that's interesting to note or important to note, I should say, is initiation of contraction of the ventricles happens down here at the bottom of the heart towards the apex in the inferior most aspect. And it moves superiorly from the apex. And that is because we want blood pushed up out of these ventricles superiorly. So from the left ventricle, we want it to move up 
into the aorta. And from the right ventricle, we wanted to move up into the pulmonary artery. And that's really important. We don't want initiation of the ventricles to start in the superior aspect of these ventricles. Because if it starts here, then it then it's pushing blood inferiorly. And the exit for the ventricles is in the superior aspect of the ventricles. For the right ventricle, once again, it's through the pulmonary artery. And for the left ventricle, it's the aorta. We don't want to push blood inferiorly. That is why the initiation of electrical activity in the ventricles needs to start at the bottom of the ventricles, transferring that electrical activity to the myocardial contractile cells, and then moving superiorly. It's like squeezing toothpaste out of the bottom of the toothpaste tube. If you squeeze from the top, that's not gonna work because that's not where the exit goes from a tube of toothpaste, if you will. Back to our MACs. Once again, the cluster of MACs in the sinoatrial node is going to fire transfer that electrical activity throughout both atria and move to this AV node. And the AV node has two really important functions. The AV node is going to stall that electrical activity just for a millisecond or a few milliseconds. I honestly don't know the exact duration very quickly, but long enough to allow the blood from the atria to fill up the ventricles. And that's important because we don't want the atria and ventricles to be contracting at the exact same time. Because if they did, then that would not give the ventricles enough time to fill up with blood. So there needs to be a bit of a lag time between contraction of the atria and contraction of the ventricles. And that's one of the roles of the atrioventricular node is to stall the electrical activity to allow blood to fill up in the ventricles before it contracts. The other role of the atrioventricular node is to divert or reroute the electrical activity from here over to the AV bundle. So it can move down to the inferior aspect of the heart. And the way I have these right and left bundle branches drawn is somewhat misleading because these right and left bundle branches are not really running directly within the myocardium as is shown here. It's running through the fibrous skeleton of the heart. So when it that electrical activity is moving inferiorly right here, it's not activating these muscle fibers. And then it starts depolarizing these myocardial contractile cells to push that electro electrical activity superiorly and to start squeezing those ventricles in that myocardial vortex fashion superiorly. So once again, the two roles of the AV node are to delay the electrical impulse to the ventricles and to reroute that impulse to the AV bundle to ensure the ventricles initiate contraction inferiorly and then progress superiorly. Okay, so that's it for the electrical activity of the hearts. 